Chapter 5, Part 2 is where we are finally going to find out exactly what has energy in our body. In particular, we're going to talk about this thing called ATP, which is the energy currency in our body. And so here it is, ATP. It consists of adenosine plus three phosphate groups. We've encountered these phosphate groups before. Those were the things that we also found in a DNA molecule. And so there is a little fam familiarity between this molecule and what happened with DNA. And when energy is needed, the ATP molecule is broken down. And what you can do simply is you take one of these high energy bonds and cut it and this energy from this bond, that's the energy that's going to become available directly to your cell, and your cell can do some work. So our goal in terms of making energy available in the body is to take the energy from food and stick it into these kinds of bonds. These kinds of bonds it's, that look like they have a little squiggle, those are high energy bonds. And ATP is a high energy molecule, and breaking this bond is what's going to make energy available directly to our body. So phosphate groups are key in getting energy to various parts in the body. Phosphate transfer is the one thing that works most effectively in getting energy to us. So here are some examples for what phosphate groups can do. We start always with the ATP on the left, and we're left with ADP and that loose phosphate group on the right. How does this work? So let's say that we would like to move a muscle. Here is a motor protein. That's what our muscles are composed of. And this motor protein has a little hook and with that little hook, it's able to push itself alongside this other kind of protein here. And what we can do is we can apply the ATP. When we encounter this motor protein, we end up connecting the phosphate group and the ATP temporarily to it. And then when the phosphate group pops off, it delivers the energy to this protein and the protein will move. It will move by simply changing its shape. If you look carefully, that little thing looks like this first and then it, it bends. And this kink, that's what's moved by the energy. So very subtle, again, as before, but very effective because that's how we move our muscles. Or perhaps you're going to have a transport protein. In this case, there's a protein built into the membrane. If you remember, there's our phospholipid heads here, our phospholipid heads there. This protein goes all the way across the membrane, and we can apply the phosphate group to the top of the protein. And when that phosphate group pops off, it makes the protein change shape, and it allows some kind of solute to transport through. Or, lastly, we can simply use this in chemical reactions. Down here you have something that is high energy and something that's not so high energy. And by bringing those two together and pulling off the phosphate, the phosphate itself can make that bond. When it comes to things like dehydration synthesis, and hydrolysis, very often we need to put in some energy. You encountered some of this in the lab when we needed to put a molecule into hot water in order to get things going. And this is the kind of thing that happens here with reactions. Maybe in your case this is something we're doing this week. We can regard ATP as the energy currency in our body and I like you to think about this in terms of currency because that gives us a really nice analogy. Think about our vending machines here. If you want to activate the vending machine you're going to need some money. You can put in a quarter or a credit card, let's just consider the quarter for a minute. Um, you use that quarter and what do you do with it? Well you 
throw it into the coin slot, and then the quarter travels through a mechanism, and that mechanism then makes the machine do something. Now, ATP is perhaps like your wallet, and the phosphate group is like that quarter. Because that phosphate group is going to do something, it's going to travel, it's going to attach itself to something, and then it pops off and it moves something. And so the coin is analogous to that phosphate group. Just as it takes the coin to get the vending machine to give up the stuff that it holds, you're going to need that phosphate group to apply the energy directly to the reaction you're trying to start. And of course, eventually, just like, in re like you can recharge your wallet from an ATM or something like that, you can also recharge your food energy by eating more food. You can recharge each of these molecules that are left over, the ADP, by basically sticking one of those phosphate groups back on. So ATP as currency is a, a good way to think about how you're using energy molecules in your body. You always need to use that quarter, the phosphate group, in order to get some work done. And so we can see, just as with kinetic energy and potential energy, there's a certain amount of cycling going on. We call this the ATP cycle because it's actually the ATP, not just energy as a, as an, uh, a concept that's doing it. There's an actual molecule here. And if we start with the ATP molecule up here, this is the point where the cell may have a high amount of potential energy. That bond, if you remember, there is a phosphate group and it's attached to another phosphate group. This bond here, that has a high amount of potential energy that we can use. Now when we break that bond, that potential energy becomes kinetic energy and is now available for cellular work. So the energy leaves and becomes available to the cell and we're left with the ADP and the phosphate group at a low state of potential energy. So now what we're going to have to do is recharge it. We're going to have to form that bond again. And what we can do is we eat food, we break down the food and transfer the energy from the food into this bond so we can create another one of these bonds. And then this whole thing can cycle many, many times. And it does this very, very quickly. You'll find that your body requires hundreds of millions of ATP molecules per second just to maintain itself. And then if on top of that you might want to run a race, well, you're going to be able to generate a lot more ATP than that. That's the part on ATP.